Hello everyone and welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. I hope you guys are all doing well and are ready to learn, so let's get started. Some typical friction questions you will see in this course are force required to make something slide, force required to make something tip, or the force required to make an assembly move. The key thing here, which I highlighted in red, is basically you're analyzing systems to figure out how much force they can take before they start moving. So if we were to look at this and sum it up, basically all friction type questions require you to assume a pending motion on one of the surfaces. Remember, impending motion, which we talked about on the previous slide, that is the maximum frictional force that can develop before sliding occurs. So that's the whole goal of this course. What is the maximum force I can apply before something starts to move? Let's look back at an example to kind of show you guys what I mean. Let's say that we have our box, our slipping or tipping scenario, and let's say that our coefficient of static friction is equal to 0.4. Well, we have a box, we have a force P, and of course it has a weight 50, and we're given some dimensions. Now a typical question would say, okay, what is the maximum force this box can take before it starts to move? Now, if you guys remember back from the moments video, this is a very specific case because we actually have two mechanics at play here. If I were to press something, I can make it slide. But remember, when it comes to moments, if I were to press something higher up, I can actually make it start to tip. First things first, we have to complete our free body diagram. As you will see, a lot of friction questions are basically just creating a free body diagram and solving with statics. That's it, it seems rather simple, but again, the applications are where it becomes hard. So if I have a force P going to the right, then we know that we have a frictional force at the bottom surface trying to counteract that. Another thing that we have is if we have a weight coming downwards and our box is resting on a surface, well, the surface provides a normal force to counteract the weight. And we talked in the frictional video that at the point where this is just about to tip, that normal force would actually be at the edge, 0.0. So if you guys are wondering why it's over there, just go back to the moments video. We talk about it more in depth. So again, all friction is, is creating a free body diagram and solving for forces. If I were to look at this free body diagram, I only actually have three unknowns and I have three equations. So things become rather simple. So if I were to go summation of forces in the Y, well, there's only two forces in the Y direction. We have our normal force pointing upwards and we have our weight coming downwards. So we can say, okay, our normal force is equal to our weight, which is just equal to 50. So this would be kilonewtons, pounds, whatever units you're given. Now, if we were to go some of the forces in the X direction equals zero, this is where it starts getting fun. We know that if I were to consider a horizontal force with no moment, remember just horizontal forces, we would know that I'm trying to slide the box. So in this case, we have P going to the right and we have our frictional force going to the left. Now, the key here is when we're looking at this scenario purely horizontal, we're considering a sliding case. So I would say that this is P slide. And if we were to rearrange this, we know that P slide is directly proportional to our frictional force. And we were saying if this frictional force is just on the verge of moving, or the system was just on the verge of moving, we have the formula where it's equal to mu times n. So we know that mu is 0.4, and the normal force is what we saw for above. We can see that our p force to make this box slide is actually going to be 20. So again, 20 kilonewtons, 20 pounds, whatever you guys want. But again, this was only considering a sliding case. We said in the moments video that if I were to start increasing that height of P, there becomes a point where this box actually tips rather than slides. So if I were to go summation of the moments about 0.0, we see that we have our P force times that distance D, the 75, plus our weight times B, that kind of that thickness to the midpoint of our box. And if we were to arrange this, we can find that the P required to make this box tip is 16.7. So if we were to look at this, we can actually say, okay, because our tipping force or the force required to make it tip is lower than the force required to make it slide, tipping will occur before the box slides and it will occur when our P is equal to 16.7. 
So the, again, the, the typical friction type question, what is the force required to make it move? Well, that would be the 16.7. That is the lowest force required to cause motion on this box. And then if you're ever given a box scenario, they'll typically ask, well, will it slide or will it tip? Well, in this case, we know that it is going to tip. So this is why friction becomes hard because you have to start analyzing all the mechanics of different things. Now we're gonna talk about one last thing and that is friction angles. So the normal force and the frictional force can be combined into a single resultant force acting at an angle. This angle is called the angle of static friction. So let's look at a system in impending motion. We have a force P acting on the box. So of course we have friction counteracting that and we have a normal force. Well, again, if F is my X component and N is my Y component of a resultant force, if you will, we know that the resultant force is going to act something like this. Now, the angle between the normal force, so the vertical direction, and that resultant force, we call that Vs, or the angle of static friction. And if we were to analyze this, well, we know that if we were to go tangent of the angle, it's equal to F divided by N, which we know it's equal to mu s times n, the n's cancel, so it's just equal to mu s. So if I want the angle of static friction, all I have to go is inverse tangent of mu s. Now you guys are saying, Clayton, why is this important? What exactly does this mean? It just, it looks like extra work. Well, <laughs> all of engineering statics just looks like extra work, but it actually has some purpose because this is also referred to as the angle of repose. So if I were to take my box, and I were to start inclining it, we know that there's going to be a specific point where the box is going to slide down the incline. And this angle is actually going to be phi s. So if I were to incline my surface and my angle is less than or equal to that angle of static friction, my box is going to stay. It's not going to actually slide down that surface. But if my angle of inclination is greater than phi s, so I keep inclining it up, well, my box is actually going to start sliding down the incline. So yeah, that's it for this video. I wanna thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.